I welcome to our video on parallel lines cut by a transversal. This is going to be a two part video. In the first part, I'm going to introduce all of the angle relationships and definitions. And in part two, I will actually do some examples. So let's start by talking a little bit about parallel lines. I, I'm sure you guys know by now that parallel lines never intersect. So what we're looking at here is a line that is parallel to another line. And in mathematics, we just put arrows on them. So if these two arrows both have, excuse me, if these two lines both have one arrow, then they're parallel to each other. If they both had two arrows, then they are both parallel to each other as well. And that's not super important in this diagram, but if we get you know, some craziness in here, we have two more lines, then we are gonna need to know that the two arrows correspond to each other. They are parallel, and then the one arrows are as well. Anyway, so the arrows uh, represent that the lines are parallel to each other. That means they never intersect, of course. But we introduced this new line right here that sort of cuts through both of those parallel lines, and that's called a transversal. Trans sort of meaning across. So when the transversal comes through, and the transversal could be a line, a ray, or a, even a segment, it comes through and, and really creates tons and tons of angles. In fact, eight of them. And in this video, I'm going to really sort of give these angles names and talk about their relationships. So here we go. Let's move on to the first relationship. So we've got our parallel lines. All right, we have the arrows on them. And we have our transversal that comes through. And it is cutting these two parallel lines and creating eight angles four clusters, four, four right there and four right there. So the first angle relationship that we want to talk about is what happens when the angles in both clusters are in the same position. Now you can see hopefully that this angle right here is in the top right of that particular cluster and so is that. When they're in the same position, so they're on the same side of our transversal and they're both to the upper right of our parallel lines, those are called corresponding corresponding angles. Corresponding meaning they're in the same position. And corresponding angles, as you can probably tell, are congruent. They have the same measure, in other words. Now those are not the only two pairs of corresponding angles. If I wanted to find the corresponding angle to this one, I would look right over here. They're in the same positions. And you can do the same thing right here. That blue angle corresponds with this blue angle and this orange angle corresponds with this orange angle. So at this point it might be helpful for you to use your highlighters or your different colored pens or whatever, but that's the first angle relationship when angles are kind of in the same position. They're in the same spot in both groupings. Next up, we need to have a general understanding of what it means for angles to be on the interior. And when we say interior, we're basically just talking about the angles that are on the inside of our parallel lines. These angles right here Angle one, two, three, and four are all interior angles. Those are all interior angles. I'll use a red pen for that. This is the interior of our of our diagram. And you probably guessed it. The other angles are exterior. So all these angles out here are exterior angles. So you can just highlight these. Hopefully you get the general idea that these angles out here are exterior. Maybe that's angle five, six, seven, and eight. These angles are on the outside of our parallel lines, so we call them exterior. That's gonna be pretty important in our next set of 
relationships. So now we're going to really look at what happens when we have an angle that is right here and right here. So these are on opposite sides of our transversal. Remember, this is our transversal. So these angles are on opposite sides of our transversal. One's above it, one's below it. When that's the case, we call them alternate. Alternate meaning opposite sides. And again, they're both on the interior. That's the interior. So these are simply alternate interior angles. And again, alternate interior angles are congruent. They're the same measure. Moving on. Next up, what happens when we have angles that are alternate? So one's out here and one's over here. They're on different sides of our transversal, but they're exterior. Well, you guessed it. These are alternate and they are exterior. So we simply call them alternate exterior angles and they look like they're the same measure and they are mathematically alternate exterior angles are congruent now there are some pretty fancy proofs that are behind all this stuff but I'm not really gonna get into that right now I'm just gonna really present to you the basic definitions and go from there moving on what happens when we have angles that are both on the inside, but they're on the same side of the transversal. So hopefully you would agree that these are interior angles. They're both on the inside of our parallel lines, but this time they're on the same side of our transversal. They're both above the transversal. So we call these same side interior angles. That's pretty simple. What's a little bit tricky though is that these are not congruent. You can see that this one is obtuse and this one is acute, but these two angles add up to 180. So we say that they are supplementary. Same side interior angles are supplementary. So in other words, if this one is 50 degrees, this one is 130 degrees. And if you're looking for a little bit more of a formal name for these angles, instead of saying same side interior, you'll probably hear me say consecutive interior. It just sounds a little bit more mathematically mature. And that wraps it up. So in the next video, we're going to really run through some examples. And, and what I'd, I want you to really think about, though, is that even though we, uh, we haven't explicitly said so, if this is 130, this is 2. Those are still vertical angles. This is 50. This is 50. All right, in the previous video, we said that if this is 50, the one right next to it is its supplement. The one right next to 50 is its supplement. So as we fill in all of these missing angles, you can see that we're basically just looking at two in this parallel line cut by a transversal cluster. We're basically just looking at two different angle measures. It's either 130 or 50 all the way around. And um, we can still sort of look at our corresponding angles. 130 corresponds with 130. We can look at our alternate exterior angles. 50 is alternate exterior to 50. We can look at our alternate interior angles. 130 is alternate interior to 130. And of course, we can look at our consecutive interior angles. 130 and 50 are consecutive interior. All right, so in addition to all these new definitions, don't ever forget your vertical, your complementary, and your supplementary angles. Those are all still uh, relevant in these diagrams. So in the next video, we're going to look at some examples of this using some algebra. Thanks for watching.